Bravo, move! Good morning, guys. This talk is a follow-up to the previous one, which was concerning the uh, squad hasty attack. And I covered in the previous talk the basic drill for a squad hasty attack. And there's lots of good stuff to come out of that drill, which is applicable to real-life combat situations. I advise that you go and watch that um, as you before you watch this one. This is a follow-up. And the reason for this is that in the previous talk, I had the squad come under contact from a, a position where the squad was moving, but moving in what we call traveling overwatch. Today, I'm going to take that up a notch, and I'm going to take you through a scenario where the squad is utilizing bounding overwatch. I'll give you a quick explanation of what that is, and then I'm going to sort of go through what the squad could do given the situation that I'm going to run, run through on the, on the sand table model today. So, if a squad is moving, then there's basically three ways, or well, I would say four ways that we can move. Okay? The first one is we can move in what we call traveling. What that means is the squad is generally all together. So the two teams, if it's a two-team squad, and the squad leader are moving in a formation with intervals, etc. But they are generally moving together. What I used in the previous talk was traveling overwatch. What that means is that the squad, the teams of the squad are separated and they're separated by a tactical bound. And that tactical bound depends on the terrain and it is designed so that the hope is so that should one of the teams come under enemy contact, under enemy fire, the other team will not be directly involved and therefore has the freedom of maneuver. There's an additional issue with a nine-man squad of where the squad leader is going to place himself because he doesn't want to run around the battlefield on his own. Um, but he's going to have to place himself somewhere where he's got some mutual support and protection from one of those teams. If you're moving and traveling Overwatch and you one of the teams comes under effective enemy fire, then you've got lots of options there. And these options are covered in detail, for example, in the Max Velocity Tactical, Tactical Manual, Small Unit Tactics. What you can do is that team that's free to maneuver can do a ver various things. It can either move back to secure a rally point if you're going to be breaking contact. It can move up to add support by fire to allow that, that other team to extract if you're going to break by contact. Break contact. It can move up into a position of support by fire to allow the other team to assault. It can, as in the drill that I showed you in the previous talk, become the assaulting team while the team that came under fire uh, becomes a support by fire team and then you're running a squad hasty attack. So before you even launch into a squad hasty attack, if you recall, I talked about the need for the squad leader to do a quick combat estimate. And that, that combat estimate, based on the situation that he finds himself in, is going to determine the decision that he makes going forwards, whether we're breaking contact and how we're going to do that, or whether we're going to conduct a squad hasty attack and the exact mechanism for doing so. So if you want to look at it on a threat scale, then if the squad is moving traveling, then we consider that to be a, a slightly lower threat. We've got, we're still in a security posture by the formation that we adopt, but we're all kind of together. And there may be lots of reasons for that, and it might be because you're part of a larger formation, a platoon, etc. Um, if you're moving and traveling Overwatch, then, then you, you consider yourself to be in a slightly higher risk situation. And then if, if you move to bounding Overwatch, then you are moving cautiously. What bounding Overwatch means, and it's separate from fire and movement, it's related, but it's separate. What what bounding overwatch means is that you are going to put a team down, you're going to put, put a team down in a firm position in order to provide overwatch of the ground ahead and then you're going to move another team up to the next tactically sound position, maybe the next hilltop, whatever it is. So you're, you're kind of moving. Now, and you're alternating who's going to be doing the, uh, the, the overwatch portion. So. 
Unlike fire and movement where you're under direct enemy fire, bounding overwatch gives you the ability to patrol but it give, and, and gives you a, a wider latitude of, of, of ability to move, but you still got that one team down. Um, and then the next thing which I'm not really going to cover today, and I'll cover in a future talk, would be to patrol in satellite patrolling, usually, usually using three teams, a three-team squad, okay? And that's satellite patrolling, which is, is three elements moving and also can involve the idea of overwatch elements and that's something I'll cover it's covered again in the tactical manual and I'll cover that in a future one of these talks so the idea being that if we're gonna have uh, one team cross an area of ground we're not sure what's ahead of us then we've got a team in an overwatch position and that overwatch position is a position of potential support by fire so should the team that's moving come under contact then the team that's they're going to conduct their drills and then the team that's in Overwatch is going to locate the enemy and begin to suppress, which is going to support that other team. That other team is going to get itself into a position of cover as best as possible, and at that point, we can then decide what we're going to do. So when I do the little, uh, you know, the little sand table thing today, you'll see that I have a team in Overwatch, and I'll have a team then moving, and then that team will come under contact from an enemy position and they're going to start maneuvering I'm going to have them peel into a creek because that's the best position of cover supported by the other team once they get into that creek that actually gives the squad an option at that point because at that point they could break contact back down that creek and the other team could peel back off the hilltop and we're gone or at that point we could then launch a version of the squad hasty attack and there's lots of different options there but what I'm going to simply have is the team that's on the hilltop that was in overwatch is going to remain there as support by fire and the team that initially came under contact is going to get out into some ground and then they're going to maneuver to the flank and then they're going to assault when they maneuver to the flank having initially got out of the X where they were contacted and got into this kind of creek I'm not actually going to have them if you recall in the previous talk I had them uh, move to the flank as, as covertly as possible so that the enemy didn't realize they were on the flank. In this situation, everybody's in contact. So once they get into the creek, they're actually going to peel up the creek, continuing to bring the enemy into fire until they get to a flank, until they get to that 90 degree angle, and then they will assault through. So these are options. The whole point of what we're going to do today is show an example option, and we're going to do it from bounding overwatch. So remember, bounding overwatch is something you're going to do when, the, um, when you are uh, concerned as you're advancing to contact. You don't really know what's ahead of you and you want to have additional security. It's putting more insurance there. It's putting, hey, we've got someone covering us from the high ground as we cross this dodgy valley, etc. Let's go over to the sand table. Okay, welcome back to the sand table. So what we've got here is we have an enemy position up here, enemy team who are concealed. Similar to last time, we have a creek running down here, joined by this creek into a creek junction right here, and then running down and off the, off the model. Right here, we've got an area of high ground and over here, we have another area of high ground. What we've got now is we've got one team here that has moved up onto this high ground and is now in a position of overwatch. Now that they're in position here, the second team to which the squad leader has attached himself is moving up with the intention of getting up onto this piece of high ground here. Once they get up, up onto this high ground here, then this team is going to move on from there. Now we have the second team moved into their overwatch position. We have the squad leader here who's observing the situation and communicating as necessary. 
now that these guys are down in their overwatch position, this team can begin to move forwards. With this team in overwatch here, this team begins to move forward in an arrowhead formation. Half left, top of small hill, rapid fire! Enemy front, 75, rapid fire! Break left, peel left, break left, peel left! This team has now made it into the creek. For the shoe for the purposes of this, they are now in cover from the enemy. This team continues to, having won the firefight, they are now suppressing the enemy. Squad leader makes his decision. At this point, he could move these guys back, peel these guys back down into the dead ground, and then get out of there. He decides he's going to assault right flanking. He's going to leave this team as a support by fire team, he's going to send this team up the creek on the right hand side. For the purposes of this, the way that the terrain model is, yes he could run down here and join these guys. The alternative is that he, at this position here, just to show you another leadership method here, is he has full vision of what's going on. So there's no reason why he can't command from here, send this team round under the steam of a competent team leader to conduct the assault. Okay guys, so there it is. So we had the team move through the creek to the right flank. They peeled up the creek. They got into position, into their assault position, and they assaulted by buddy pair fire movement until they were close enough to the enemy position where they went forward as an assault line to assault through the position. As they did that, roughly using a 30 degree uh, safety angle, the support by fire would either shift left or it would cease fire. It's important to understand that you're only going to get this done if you can suppress the enemy. I know there's a lot of stuff out there, Hollywood, all that kind of stuff, people running around, okay, and not much suppression of the enemy going on. You're only going to get this done, or alternatively, you're only going to get this done with minimal casualties if you can suppress the enemy. If you can't suppress the enemy, then you want to think about not doing it, okay? So, accurate fire to suppress the enemy. We suppress the enemy by affecting his behavior. We must get rounds 
close enough to him to hit him, to kill him, to wound him, or to force him to take cover, which is going to interrupt the fire that he can put back at us, and that's going to allow us to maneuver. We will only get up onto an assault line, onto the enemy position, if we have the enemy suppressed. And remember, I haven't covered any kind of more complex assaults at this time, I've just covered an enemy practically in the open. It's just an enemy position with guys lying around. There's no bunkers, there's no building, there's nothing more complicated. You will only get up there, or I caveat that, you will only get up there with minimum casualties or no casualties if you are able to suppress the enemy. Thanks very much.